Hi everybody, Brian Russell here with Red Shoe Rant. I'm going to go through building my kit today, which starts with the Alzo Transformer Rig. Now one of the things that I've done is I have gotten these Transformer Extenders. So what these do is they, in essence, allow my Transformer Rig to get higher. I've already actually put one set in, but we're going to be kitting this out with my JAG35 set of rails and my D-Focus Follow Focus here today. So we're going to need a little bit more height on this. Very simple. As a matter of fact, when you get your transformer rig, it's going to come in pieces. We're going to put it back into pieces today. These are, make sure you sort of take up both sides a little bit at a time so you don't strip anything out. Whoa, don't bang things either. Got the bottom plate off. These just unscrew like so. You see, I'm not being too careful. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward here. I think most of you can figure this out. And put it back together. Not too hard to do. So now what we're going to have pretty soon is a rig. Now I usually make sure it's nice and tight here. I don't know how thick this is, but they actually upgraded the aluminum on the top and bottom of the transformer rig recently, which is a really nice feature. It makes it much, much stronger, um, which I like. So we're going to put this back. I'm going to make sure I've got it facing the right way. This is something I don't take apart too often. Most of the time it just stays as it is. So comes apart, goes back together really simply. All of this little included Allen wrench. Everything comes with an Allen wrench. My big problem is keeping track of all the Allen wrenches because it seems like every single gadget has one. We're gonna use, I think, just this one today. You do wanna make sure that this is pretty snug probably going to feel even a little over snug. Now I've got my new extended height Alzo transformer rig. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my uh, rail system here to it. So this requires me to have three hands, but since I don't have three hands, I'm going to make do with two hands. I don't know if you guys can see that. A lot of people complain about all the parts and pieces for DSLR, but in my experience, all shooting has lots of parts and pieces. So once again, I'm going to make sure it's nice and snug. This JAG35 mount is made for the Zacuto Gorilla Plate. It fits on there really simply. It's, uh, and then we can just tighten this up. And now the whole rig pretty solid. Next I'm going to take my follow focus, depending on how you like to shoot, you may be righty or lefty. I'll put this on the right side for me. The next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to get my Manfrotto extra long bridging plate. Put it on the bottom of this whole rig. Now, centering this or balancing this is going to be the real tricky part. So I'm going to start with this pretty much right in the center of the whole rig. And we'll see how that works. Tighten it down. Now, here's the beginnings of my rig. I'm going to put it on the tripod. One of the things I was mentioning that I love about the Alzo is the, the transformer rig is it's like super, super sturdy. The first iteration of it, the metal was a little thinner and it wasn't quite as sturdy, but this is uh, nice and rock solid, which I love. Now I'm also going to put my Juice Link DT454 uh, on top of the transformer. 
so that I can record good quality sound directly to the camera. A lot of people complain about DSLR audio. I use this for pro shoots all the time. As a matter of fact, uh, pretty much every single day I shoot direct sound. All my sound is recorded directly to camera. I do use second system sound for certain applications, uh, especially if I'm doing music recording, long recordings. The real weak link in this uh, Juice Link box is this little cable right here. And it plugs in, you know, to the back of the Juice Link box and to the side of the camera. The weak link with this though is if we as human beings forget to plug it into the camera, you're still going to monitor it out of the box and it's going to sound just fine, even though it's far from just fine. The other weak link, again, human error, is that you got to make sure your camera is set to manual audio. And once again, since you're not monitoring out of the camera, this could be a problem. And I've had this problem happen to me. So the last bit is what I just mentioned, which is the monitor. So I'm going to put my Marshall monitor. This is a really heavy, heavy monitor. Uh, I bought this, I don't know, uh, I guess about a year, year and a half ago. And it works really well, but it is very, very heavy. I actually have a new one that I should have brought up today, which is much lighter weight. There's a lot of nice monitors out there, a ton of them hitting the market in the last few months or so that also have aspect ratio compensation for the Canon DSLRs in particular. Virtually all these monitors, whether they're four by three or 16 by nine, the picture does not properly display because the aspect ratio that the Canon outputs is a little odd. Uh, the nice thing about this though, is I now have my complete rig and this works uh, really well for me. Like I said, I do, I do tons of work with it. And uh, I'll also use an HDMI splitter uh, frequently. So instead of going from the camera into the monitor, I'm going from the camera into an HDMI splitter. HDMI splitter goes out to monitors for the client and the producer and feeds back to this monitor as well. Now I've got something that I can really shoot on. I've got my follow focus and uh, sometimes I'll actually have a focus puller. Not a lot, but occasionally I have a focus puller. The defocus works really well. It does have to be adjusted frequently. Uh, it introduces some, you get some play introduced into it, but it works nicely. It's very inexpensive. And here we have a full rig. This whole rig, here's, here's the real beauty of this whole rig is it instead of spending, you know, $2,000 for an equivalent rig from some of the bigger guys, you know, by assembling these different pieces, you know, I think all in, I'm at about six or $700, um, not including the monitor and the, and the preamp, but I'm just talking about the rig, the transformer rig, the Jag 35 rails, um, you know, the, the gorilla plate, um, you know, that sort of stuff. And the, and the follow focus actually all in about seven, 800 bucks. With the Juice Link box, another $419, and the monitors, you know, they range from 200 bucks to, you know, 1100 bucks. Not really that hard. What did this take us? I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes to set up. People talk about hours and hours to set up their DSLR. I think that's a pretty efficient way to do it. Anyway, go out there and shoot. Learn a lot. This is a great kit. Love Alzo. Love Juice Link. Love Jag 35. See you next time on Red Shoe Rant.